April. Hello. Okay, so hello. My name is April, and I am today I'm representing Smile Train's Young Leadership Circle. Smile Train is an organization that helps provide training, funding, and resources to empower doctors in over 85 countries to provide 100% free cleft repair surgery as well as comprehensive cleft palate hair. And the Young Leadership Circle is a group of young professionals throughout the country who um, are committed to furthering those efforts and assisting Smile Train with furthering those efforts. So today, we are celebrating National Cleft and Craniofacial Awareness Month, or Awareness and Prevention Month. Um, and we have a special guest, which is who is Dr. Jessica Canelato. Hi, Dr. Hi. Thank you very much for the beautiful introduction. I love that. Um, thanks for meeting with me. I'm really excited for the interview today. You, I'm really excited to talk to you about this. Um, so we have a couple of questions that we want to ask you if you're sure. uh, ready. So you're known as the cleft dentist and you built up a long-standing relationship with cleft treatment. Can you tell us why you decided to dedicate your career to providing comprehensive cleft palate care? Yeah, definitely. So um, I was born with a unilateral cleft lip and complete cleft palate. And I had you know many surgeries growing up and because I was so used to being in the hospital and going to doctor visits, I played doctor a lot when I was a little kid. So I always knew I wanted to be a doctor of some sort. Yeah. And um, and then finally, like towards the tail end of my treatment, like in college, um, my smile was finally restored by a prosthodontist, which is a specialist in dentistry. Um, so like anything fake going into the mouth is what a prosthodontist specializes in. And um, I had never, I, I had never felt so confident before as when I had this done. Having my smile restored changed my life. So I'm missing two of my front teeth, and I have two dental implants. My prosthodontist planned the dental implants and replaced the missing teeth. And um, I just absolutely loved having the implants and having the confidence in my smile. So it was at that moment that I knew I wanted to be a dentist. Um, and not only a dentist, but a specialist, so a prosthodontist just like mine. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I always wanted to kind of give back to the people that helped me growing up. So when I was in high school, I volunteered at the hospital, the children's hospital, um, that had the craniofacial team. And I really enjoyed doing that. And then, um, I, you know, I got to learn a lot. I got to see a lot of patients. And I always felt like I wanted to give more than what I had to these patients. So that's kind of my background in general and why I started this whole blog and became a dentist as well. Awesome. Um, and so in your opinion, uh, what do you think is the most common misconception that people have about cleft? So I really feel like the most common misperception is that cleft patients can't lead a normal life because of what they look like or what they've been through. And um, I think that the most important thing to remember about cleft is that it can be treated. So we may not look perfect. We go through a lot of bullying, but we come out even stronger afterwards. Definitely. And um, we can do anything that everybody else can do. And I, I even have to remind myself of this a lot of the time. So for kids, it's even more difficult. So I like to remind parents that, that ki the kids can be have a normal life because it's so easy to get lost in all of the doctor visits and hospital visits and all those challenges that it's easy to forget that. Definitely. So my goal is definitely to be an example of someone who made it through treatment and became a dentist, went to dental school, and um, and I'm leading a pretty normal life. And um, <laughs> I just want to be an inspiration to people. Awesome. That's awesome. I definitely feel you on that. Like, just going through my own personal journey, I also worked with a prosthodontist early on. Oh, awesome. And I totally relate to everything you just said. So I love that. That's really cool. 
Um, so can you just help us understand a little bit more about what the importance of dental care is for patients with cleft palate and cleft lip? And um, if a child weren't able to access those services, um, what would be, what would happen to that child? And, you know, what specific treatments are absolutely essential for the patients to be evaluated for and receive? Yeah, okay, that's a really good question. So first and foremost, um, hygiene is definitely very important to emphasize in dental care. Um, so brushing your teeth is very important because you have to get rid of that harmful bacteria that can lead to decay and then tooth loss eventually. So, but especially for cleft patients because most cleft patients are already missing one or two teeth. You don't want them to lose any more than what they've already lost. So, um, in uh, for cleft patients, Dentistry, the specific treatment in dentistry starts at a very young age. Um, the first dental specialist that a child would see is a maxillofacial prosthodontist, and um, they'll have an obturator made, which mm -hmm. actually um, closes the gap between the palate and the nose. And this helps a lot with feeding the baby. So um, this is usually done until you're about three years old. So um, that's actually the first time someone will see a dentist. And then after that, you'll see an orthodontist. So a lot of cleft patients have what's called malocclusion because there's so much scar tissue in the upper jaw from all of the surgeries that the upper jaw is actually going to be constricted as the lower jaw continues to grow. Mm -hmm. So in the end, you get an upper jaw that's smaller than the lower jaw. And this leads to issues with speech, chewing, and it can also cause jaw pain too. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something that an orthodontist will help fix over the patient's lifetime. So it takes many years. It'll, they will probably start seeing an orthodontist around the age of eight, and then till about 18 is when all yeah. of that will be fixed. Yeah. And then another thing is that um, because of the missing teeth, the teeth next to the missing um, the space will start to drift into that missing space because teeth like to go where there's room. Yeah. And that can create some issues with, you know, aesthetics, um, how the patient looks. So an orthodontist will help with that as well. And then also there's the bone grafting procedure that an oral surgeon does. And this is because there's no cleft patients don't have bone in the area of the cleft. So they need a bone graft to help restore the stability of the arch. Mm -hmm. So, and then there's a lot. And then the <laughs> there's replacement of missing teeth. So, and that's where I come in um, as the prosthodontist. Um, we replace missing teeth with either a removable partial denture, a fixed bridge, or we can even do dental implants. That's like the Cadillac treatment. Um, and then of course, if there's no access to dental care, then you risk um, tooth loss because of um, decay. And while it's not life-threatening to not have access to dental care, it could become life-threatening if you have decay that becomes so massive that it can create abscess, and then that can actually be a life-threatening condition. So brushing is first and foremost the most important thing, and then um, tooth loss can lead to issues with speech, aesthetics, socialization, and eating. Definitely. Is that dentistry in a nutshell for a cleft? Yeah, oh my gosh. I, was, right? I mean, I just remember going through all of those things sure that you described. Sure. And I mean, it was so methodical, one thing really led to the next. Exactly. And it's so hard to think about not being able to have one of those things. Right. So, exactly. yeah. I agree. Uh, so, Going off of that, so um, are these treatments difficult for patients to receive? And if so, why and what are you doing to try and overcome these challenges and support the patients to receive the care that they need? Okay, yeah. So a lot of the treatment can be difficult due to the cost. And in, a lot of insurances will cover the cost because these are seen as medically necessary procedures because we're bored with these conditions. Um, but in some cases where insurance doesn't cover it, in that case, 
orthodontics would be out. And that's okay because you can still function. It may not be the best, but you can still function as a person without having orthodontics done. You'll have malocclusion, but um, it's not life-threatening. And so it's okay to do without. And then um, as far as teeth replacement go, we would just choose a less expensive teeth replacement option. For example, we would do a removable partial denture instead of going all the way and doing the dental implants, which would be the most expensive option. But I think the most important thing for me as a dentist is to educate the patient. So let them know how important hygiene is, like we were talking about before, because we don't want the patient losing any more teeth than they you know, already don't have. And I, I like to educate the patient and the parent on um, the different options for a dental treatment and the repercussions of not having the treatment done and then letting them decide what to do because as long as they make an educated decision then I feel like I've done my job. Awesome. Okay. So, um, you noticed that your website offers a variety of posts that, that explain the site social and environmental factors of cleft and recipes for the recovery process. Um, which I would have loved to have when I was going through my yeah. room. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's clear that you really care about the holistic um, well-being of your patients. So, um, has one is there one patient in particular that particular or that has touched you and inspired your work? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I guess first of all, address the um, my different blog posts. So, the reason that I write about different things besides just the dental treatment is because you know when you meet someone the face you, you see their face first so no matter how good of a person you are like there's always a judgment that happens when you see someone's face and it's definitely difficult as a cleft patient knowing that we look different so um i i felt these things too growing up and it's just important to remember that we're people not just patients so that's why i like to address these different topics on my blog it's just to emphasize that um and then i did have i have two cases actually that have really touched me um one of them was in my residency program and then another one was on a mission trip when i went to the dominican republic so um in my residency program i treated a little girl she was eight years old and she had a bilateral cleft lip and palate, and she was actually adopted, which I thought was, it just was so heartwarming that these parents were so loving and adopted a child with special needs when it could have been simpler to adopt a child without special needs. So that really touched me. Um, but watching her confidence grow and just offering her advice every time she came in was just my favorite part of the day and my residency program in general. Um, and she loved knowing that I went through the same treatment as her. Mm -hmm. It's just, it made yeah. her feel so much better. Um, so I really like feeling relatable to the patients. Definitely. So, and also she was a really, really great gymnast, which <laughs> I thought was awesome that like, that she just was able to excel in another, in an area of life just because it just highlighted that, you know, we're, we're people, we're normal, we're leading normal lives. Um, and then the, not, the other patient was, um, I, when I was in dental school, I went to the Dominican Republic for a mission trip mm -hmm. and uh, we provided free dental care to a small, like poor community. Mm -hmm. And these people would line up every day huge long lines waiting in hours just to like be free of pain or like to have their smile restored so they can get a job because nobody could get a job over there if they didn't have a nice smile which was just like so nice to be able to do that for these patients and one day there was this little boy who had a cleft lip and palate and it was repaired um but he was he was probably like uh, nine or ten and I, I ran up to him when he was standing in line and he couldn't speak english um, but he just stared at me for a really long time and then he gave me the biggest hug and it was so cute that we didn't have to like exchange any words we just understood each other and I just felt like I was such like a source of hope for him so 
I got like a cute picture with him. He was just adorable. I, I loved meeting him. So those were those are two of the biggest moments that have stood out so far for me. Definitely. That's great. Yeah. But actually being able to relate to the patient so integral. I think especially because, you know, as a kid when you're going through all this stuff, you just don't really know what, what's happening and like to have it not it really relate to you, it's just oh so I know. And, like you don't know like what it's gonna be like in the end, like if it's all definitely. gonna work out okay. But it's, so it's nice to see someone that it worked out for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, so Smashing is happy to have you as an ambassador for our life transformative efforts. Um, so why is it important for you to be a partner with Smile Train? Yeah, so um, it really means the world to me to partner with Smile Train. I'm so happy to be a part of it. Um, I'm so happy to be part of an organization that's transformed the lives of so many people. Um, and I think the best part about it is that I get to meet people like you who share the same passions as me. I love that. I think that people who want to help cleft patients are like just the most selfless and giving people. <laughs> Um, so it makes my heart so happy just to be able to meet people like you. Um, and my hope is that by partnering with Smile Train, my story can get out there and be a source of inspiration and hope for patients. And also I can help treat more class patients this way too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I hope it brings a lot more your way because the work that you're doing is amazing. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> So what's one thing about Smile Train that you think people would be surprised to know? So I think that probably the most surprising thing is how um, giving so little can go such a long way. It's almost unbelievable that one surgery is only $250. That's amazing. And it's, it's like a, just even a small fundraiser could help raise enough money for at least one surgery, at least. Definitely. So I feel like that's like easier for a donor to like wrap their heads around donating because they know exactly what it's going towards and it's such a life changing procedure. Um, so it's just such an amazing organization that cares so much about the patients and bringing cleft awareness and I'm really, really proud to be a part of the team. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's been great to talk to you. Is oh, there anything else you. that you'd like to say about Smile Shame, about um, anything? Um, just, I'm really happy to be a part of it, and I'm so <laughs> glad that I get to meet people like you, really. I really Thank appreciate it. So much. It's been so great talking to you and sharing experiences and common experiences and new experiences, really. Uh, yeah, oh, that's great. I hope I get to talk to you again soon. I hope so, too. Thank you. Thank you.